Okay, I'm Daxon and this is my voice. So with that out of the way, I want to show you a cool way I came up with to visualize any given run on surf maps. I already came up with it a couple of weeks ago, but Wii's video on KSF records comparing the current and former world record on surf Mesa inspired me to show my method and its potential. Unlike Wii's method that only utilizes Counter-Strike Source and a software called Half-Life Advanced Effects or HLAE in short, my way involves the 3D program Blender, which unlocks a lot more possibilities, but also makes the process a bit more complicated and time consuming. I don't think there is real interest for a detailed tutorial, so let me sum it up real quick. First we need to pick a map, let's say Surf Boreas by Synchronize. We decompile it using BSP source and with the Blender source tools add-on we can import it now into Blender. Next we need the player camera data of the run. We get that by downloading a demo with the world record bot on it. Fortunately KSF provides such demos for free as long as a VIP or admin has uploaded it to the temporary archive. With HLAE we can now record this camera data and import it into Blender as an animated camera. Let's say I want to compare two runs for this example and as luck has it I have the demo of me setting my PB on Boreas as well as Crew's world record run. To generate this line, which is actually called a curve object, we select one of our runs and generate a motion path. That is a visualization of the path the camera takes through the map, with each of these dots symbolizing a keyframe. This motion path is not an actual object yet and it doesn't show up in the render, it only serves the purpose to help the 3D artist to see where animated objects are at any given point in time of the scene. There is no direct button we can press to turn it into a real object, so we need to utilize the Python API that Blender comes with where we can write our own process in form of Python code. Here we instruct Blender to turn the motion path into a curve object that shares the same keyframes with the same values that the player camera has. The newly generated object is not visible either because curves can be used for many things in Blender and believe it or not, not every Blender user wants to visualize surf ones. Therefore we just give the curve geometry some depth and a color and animate the ending part of the curve to the second last frame of the run, that way the curve's moving end is exactly at the moving camera's position. To make life easier for us we can put all these steps into our script plus aligning the runs at the first frame of the project. As long as the first frame we choose to generate the motion path from is in fact the first frame of the actual run. Applying the extended script on the second run here gives us the finished curve instantly. If you want the players to be represented by something, let's say a model, wait, well, that's not that easy. Sadly, HLAE was made with CSGO specifically in mind and is not always doing what you would hope when it used with CSS. In this case, it sometimes records the location of the player models properly, but more often it doesn't. So I recommend if you want a model to represent a player, just import one or take any object you want and parent it to the camera. There are some pros and cons to this method though. The big upside is that Blender is much much more capable than sources. You can do literally whatever you like with your comparison. Give the models a different color, change the textures of the map, change the lighting, remap the time, it's all up to you. For example, here I imported all runs, including failed and resetted runs from a session of Surf Pro Disress, Surfing Boreas. Then I did the same thing for all the runs in an hour long session of the player Peter, or Peter, not sure. Additionally, I added finished runs from random players I got from a demo originating from the KSF beginner server. I think this is where this method shines the most, as it visualizes a bigger amount of runs and can be the source to educate people what the differences are between times of certain groups or skill level compared to the best in the world and how to improve by just understanding why they do what they do. Of course I'm not able to teach anybody in this regard as you can clearly see looking at my curve I'm in no position to tell anybody about surf techniques. There are a couple of problems though. Besides the obvious time and effort consumption this demands. First, Blender is not source. That comes with a couple of differences. First, you need to render out your scene. For that you need to have a basic understanding of Blender as well as the engine you render it with. You can either use EV, Blender's real-time engine. There you might have to adjust the lighting so the map doesn't look too dull compared to the in-game version. 
because in the mapping process, mappers need collision models and other funny stuff that I don't know much about. You also need to fix every curved ramp to not look like this in my video from a couple of months ago. Alternatively, you can render in cycles. A state-of-the-art, fully path-traced, physical-based render engine capable of creating amazing things. Some problems you might run into could be denoise issues or tiling issues, lighting issues, skybox issues, no draw texture and transparency issues, and the simple fact that it takes forever to render anything, and let's not even think about the nightmare that is when you realize you have messed up and need to re-render. So I cannot recommend cycles. The second problem is accuracy of the camera data, or rather the placement of the keyframes. Here's the issue. The AGR file, the file that contains the camera data we got from HLAE, has the keyframes for the camera set as what seems to be random positions. Of course, the distance between the keyframes is consistent, 1 60th of a second, to add up to 60 frames a second, but where the set of keyframes is placed seems to be random, or it's a server thing that I just don't have a clue about. But the result of it is that aligning runs perfectly to each other is almost impossible. Here's another way to see it. You want the run to start exactly when the player, which is this point of the camera, leaves the start zone. That's when, in game, the timer starts. But you got a very slight chance that the timing, where the camera is in that exact position, is actually laying on a keyframe and is not in the time span between two keyframes. What that means in simple words is, in very, very tight runs, it can happen that the run that is actually slower comes to the finish line first. I think the variance should follow this formula, which would result in a variance of 33 milliseconds. But I'm not smart, so who knows if that is right. I actually don't know if this problem also persists in Wii's way of doing things, since he also uses HLAE. But to end on a positive note, I think the upside outweighs the downside, especially with how versatile the use cases could be. For teaching purposes, visualization of a high number of runs, differences between skill levels, artistic videos, and much more. Anyways, I hope you found that at least a little bit interesting. See you guys.